Excellent. Um, if not, I have more, more jokes. jokes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I have yeah. Windows version and you add. <laughs> 8.1? Okay. I'm still using Vista. <laughs> cool. um, yeah. Um, okay, so I, I, I have been writing a few things over, over, over the years and Previously, I was doing I was doing desktop application development, so I actually have a machine with like every single version of Windows since like forever, and I'll have to test my application on every platform. Okay, never mind. Um, all right, that's that. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to ask for this whole thing starts because I'm just curious. Um, so, who does their primary development work on Mac? Mac. Uh, okay, that's like two thirds of you all. Um, Linux. Linux, uh, there's like a third, and I'm guessing no one else here uses Windows. <laughs> okay, well done. Well done. Okay, um, so that's kind of tangential. Um, so I, I'm Joel. I've been doing uh, writing software for a while. Uh, I like uh, tools. I like languages. I like um, you know basically finding ways to make engineers productive. Um, I'm that kind of person. So my five random booby tips today are. Um, short of one, actually more Rails tips on how to get your stuff done quicker. Okay, um, so let's jump straight into it. First, um, it's actually possible for you to actually run Ruby code in your browser. Uh, there's this project out there that's called Enscripten. Basically, takes all of your existing language runtime, so Python, um, Ruby. I can't remember what, what was the other one. Basically, they take the reference implementation. So in this case, MRI. Uh, they compiled it using LVM and basically generated it into like JavaScript, so you can actually run it in your browser. Um, could be useful if you are on a computer without um, Ruby installed and you need to do something. I, I don't know how useful, but give it a shot. Um, it's useful somehow. Okay. Um, you can do that too. Um, you, can, you, can, you can use Nitrous. Uh, I had, I had some, I had some reservations with Nitrous, but okay. Anyway. Okay, the next one is, um, now it's the rest of, the rest of this are all our Rails tips. Um, first one is, you're given a database, you get a schema, how do you know what you want to index? So, you can use this, this gem, um, lol DBA, supposed <laughs> to basically <laughs> run through all your models and generate a list of, um, uh, of, um, of indices which should be in your schema. Uh, could be useful. Um, I put this here because I told myself I want, I'm supposed to try and try it out, but I actually have not yet. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Okay. The next one is similar. Um, it's, it's called Bullet. Bullet is a gem that helps you eliminate your n plus 1 queries. What are n plus 1 queries? Basically, you load something, and for each item, you find some associated information. So what happens is you have to run n <coughs> SQL queries, like one for every item in your first data set. Um, Rails gets around this problem by this thing called eager loading. So then how do you know what you have to eager load and what not? So then Bullet also will run through your, as you basically run your, your, your as you visit your pages, it looks at your queries, looks at and try to guess when you probably should be using eager loading and when you have not. And it will tell you when that happens and you should do something about it. Um, once again, this is one thing I told myself I should be using, I have not used it yet. I will, I will. Okay, the next two is I think probably a bit but it's much closer to my to, 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 to my own beliefs. Um, I was okay. So the cool story, or the strange story, the weird story, whatever you want to call it, was that before I had Windows on this, uh, I was actually running um, Ubuntu, and I was like doing a Rails app in Ubuntu because why? Well, on Unisys, you have this thing called Spring, and Spring is supposed to well basically preload Rails in your memory so that whenever you run a, a rate task or some Rails thing, it's instead of taking like 10 seconds to start up and then run that command for like half a second and be done. Payloads everything, sends the command off and basically then half, half a second. Okay, uh, that was good, um, but I still found that my development experience was really, really bad. So I narrowed down to these three things. Okay, the first thing is when I requested for a page on, on, from, from my application, um, it took quite a while before I saw anything being Step, step up from whatever web server I was running to spit my page up. And I found that it spent a lot of time and crashing my disk along with it, um, running through all of my assets and trying to like figure out whether these are fresh or not. And that took quite a while. So debug asset pipeline, this, this particular gem, um, only refreshes your, your, your assets only when they have changed. Okay, it's the first thing. Second thing, 
if you have your real server running in the console, you have your assets out in debug mode, you find that you have one uh, HTTP request for every single asset. So if you bring in like 10 files, like 10 JavaScript files, for example, then you're going to see like 10 requests in your console. That's really nasty. Uh, it clouds your, 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 your actual output, which you're probably more concerned about, which is probably your SQL queries, for example. And so what Rails DevTweaks does is it actually um, blocks all these asset requests, so you can still have debug mode on, and you don't get all your assets squished in one, one, one huge file, um, and yet not have your console flooded with text. All right? um, the final one was the one that actually improved my, my uh, development time by a lot. Okay. So what happens is if you run Rails in debug mode, what happens is every time you change something, you reload a page, um, Rails will basically scour your entire directory, like every single file, open it and check to see whether it's changed. Um, in my case, it was particularly slow uh, because you have to like, I mean, opening files are not exactly the fastest thing on earth. So that also took quite some time to, you know, get up and running and, and, and decides that, you know, you should reload everything all over again. So what Rails Dev Boost does is the moment you change a file, it reloads it in the background. Uh, and so that you, know, you don't have to wait until you request for the page, and so by the time you request for the page, it's already loaded, right? Okay. So that was the first bunch of things that I did to improve my development speed. With the final one comes for Spring. Uh, I was talking about Spring just now about how Spring preloads everything, uh, but the other thing that Spring does as well is that Spring also will check all your files in your application directory or actually your entire the entire source directory. Uh, for changes, and um, I was paying attention to HTOP for a while, and probably wondering why. Um, and I found that you know Spring was loaded in the background, and it was using like 15% of a CPU. And I'm like, why? So googling around, it showed that Spring has this loop that basically iterates over every single file in your in your in your in your Rails um, application, and uh, it decides it just that decide whether it needs to reload your application. So so in a typical setup, you have these two things looking at your directories for changes to your Rails application, which is not exactly the most efficient thing to do. So Spring allows you to do this, this little thing you can put in your Spring config file. Um, basically says, instead of iterating over every single file, uh, you'll use your native uh, OS uh, method for getting notified that a file has changed. So you get so Spring instead of needing to run that busy loop, it just waits for changes. Okay, so that's it. Any questions? Otherwise, I will be hanging around for a while. Questions? No. Right. Thank you. So like I promised, uh, we have a bit of time for um, folks if you have any hot picks or things that you want to share with the group.